Hello everybody and welcome to the Next Level Racing Sim Racers Asia iRacing GT3 Series. We are here for round number one from Watkins Glen. The boot layout with the chicane. Unfortunately, I do not like that chicane at all, but oh well. And we're starting under sunset conditions. So the drivers uh, will be starting under the lights really because it's uh, quite dark already. We'll be definitely heading down into the night as they... Uh, start rolling down for their pace lap but uh, here's a look at the grid then Luis Gallant in pole position there with uh, the Frenchman Nicolas Fernat on in second place Ross Rizzo in third and then uh, Miko Nassi, Kevin Huang, Timothy Jackson, Tai Kim, uh, Halabi in eighth and Brad Klink in ninth and uh, Yashish Manhoa in uh, tenth position then uh, Jezri Jali in eleventh and in 12th is uh, Kanata. Then we've got uh, Cameron Stubber in 13th. Then Kanata, Kai Toi. Uh, Tikia in 17th. Then uh, Kelvinder Singh in 18th. Mitchell Hui in 19th. Then uh, Chan Chan Zhang in 20th. A massive grid today. We've got 44 drivers on this grid in the, uh, in the GT3s. Hong Sowet in 21st. Then Joe Huang in 22nd. Simon Sanchez in 23rd with uh, Gandor in 24th. Then we've got Brooke Leong, Ferry Tan, uh, Reynaldi Ido, uh, Cameron Bennett, then uh, Federico in 31st, Alt Amaret in 32nd, then Andy So, Aguri Hyung, uh, Ryan Lam, and Jafar in 36th. But uh, yeah, absolutely huge grid. You can see 44 cars, 37, Stephen Thomas, then uh, the driver from Macau, Kai K in 38th. Paolo in 39th. Sangyun Lee in 40th. Then uh, Boon Sanong, uh, Junos Zubir, and Stefan Iver in 44th and last place. My name is uh, Dean Baird, and Sam Fitzpatrick will be joining me very shortly alongside with uh, Marco Barbonera on the cameras and production to date. It looks like uh, Galon is uh, very, very excited to get going, almost overtaking the pace car there. But uh, Sam, do we have you? Uh, yes, well, I'll, I'll be able to follow the race, even though I, I may not be my uh, tip-top uh, self with a couple of uh, errors on, on my computer, but very excited to be here for the first race of the season. This series is always awesome. We've had so many different formats. I remember when, back when it was a multi-class championship in this series, um, so really looking forward to tonight. It should be, uh, should be one to watch and uh, quite, uh, quite climactic as well in the night. Absolutely, we've got a couple of corners left, but Sim Racers Asia celebrating their tenth year of hosting uh, sim racing leagues, and uh, many of which have been broadcast here on Apex Racing TV. I know I did the the GT4 series last year, which was absolutely brilliant, and I'm expecting nothing different this year as the drivers will head around the final corner. Now the pace car will pull off to the right hand side. The field is under the control of Gallon. We're about to go green for the first round of the season and as they're almost oh, four already flipping in the background they're four or five wide in the middle of the field here into turn number one they're gonna have to sort themselves out the track narrows up massively after turn number one oh dear cars yeah. spinning off into the uh, runoff area there but a gallons run away with things Absolutely. Oh, we've got a car off into the wall as well through turn two. I mean, if anything, the incidents that we've had through the first couple of corners have kind of thinned out the field as we go up the hill, which uh, fortunately has oh. avoided having a huge crash. But, uh, oh, the, no, the well, that is going to be one and more drivers oh, getting involved. No. Drivers sliding across the circuit. We have got a roadblock. We may have a safety car from this one because that is a huge yep. incident. The safety car has been deployed. Good work from the ad right there but uh, well that was a few separate incidents wasn't it it was straight away off the launch there was chaos and then down in turn one we had a couple of the big hitters and then uh, well some more big hits down that uh, down that straight and that is that's just classic Watkins Glen it's tr it tricky to do anything about it it is so narrow down that back straight and uh, well I can just hope that uh, the drivers get back on their feet they do get a fast repair so everyone should be able to stay in play Yep, and uh, the safety car will allow them to uh, be able to make it through. Someone's skipping the chicane there in the Ferrari. And that was the ninth place starter there, but yeah, absolutely huge. And like you said, classic Watkins Glen. The S's, uh, they always seems 
to have something like this. Interestingly, nothing happened like that in uh, the Apex Racing Academy Porsche Cup series that we had on the weekend. I was, I was bracing the, myself in the start of that one. Some of the best drivers in the world, obviously, taking part in, in oh, that one day, as you are a great, uh, great, great representative, representation of. <laughs> so, uh, you know, we've got to take it easy on these guys. It's, it's not quite that quality. Well, and, uh, interestingly, because, uh, of course, NASCAR does race at Watkins Glen uh, for some of the layout. Actually, let's have a look at the replay then. They've got the uh, safety car lights around some of the some of the circuit. What happened here at the start? Oh, this almost before the pit lane even starts. There were cars already around and uh, hard into the wall was the driver starting in 24th. Uh, Thomas, Thomas Ferry, was it? It, uh, it might have been Thomas Ferry, yes, uh, I think it was. That was uh, hard into the wall, and then things started going all sorts of wrong as they reached the top of the hill here, because uh, something happened at the top of the hill. There it is. BMW is getting into each other, and then uh, just a sort of chain reaction. Actually, I think it was a separate incident that caused a massive pileup to, that, to those two BMWs getting into each other, and then... Uh, cars flipping all over the place yeah um, really chaotic really chaotic starts um, for this uh, for this race and uh, you know I, I, you, you, you look at the the replays and it wasn't necessarily anyone's in particular fault and yet uh, those things do just have we had a big pile up in there in the master cup back on Monday and uh, lots of these incidents just uh, no one's in particular bolt a racing incident and then lots of other drivers get piled in but uh, well still means though that we can have a good race it will take up a decent amount of the race because of time to event this one so uh, this will pretty much be uh, probably a good kind of 20% of the race under pace car and hopefully we get off to a better start but of course the tyres will be cooling down very tricky for the drivers after the restart. Yeah, it's, it's definitely not going to be easy for the restart, and um, yeah, there's going to be probably three laps under the pace car, I would imagine, that's normally what happens uh, on iRacing, and you can see uh, on some of the parts of the circuit, the uh, the yellow flashing lights that uh, are there because uh, NASCAR runs here, you can, you can see that. On the pace car, of course, they're always there, but uh, not in the boot section. NASCAR doesn't use the boot section, so they're not here, they're... Actually, no, they are there. Oh. There are lights around the whole of Watkins Glen then. Little yellow flashing lights, as if the uh, the pace car in front of them wasn't enough. It's, yeah, six uh, six hours of the Glen being hosted here. Um, as to by the way, could we just go back to? Um, it's been an instant for Narong. Uh, apologies for Cameron Bennett. He's just gone off at the shoot. It seems under the pace car, which wasn't very smart. Uh, I wasn't too, nothing too big, apologies, but uh, yeah, I, I, almost a, another instance, I think, um, behind the uh, behind the safety car with the Charles having uh, further issues. Um, so one more lap to go after this one under uh, the safety car until we get back underway racing. And uh, well, this is proper darkness now, Dan. I, I, I wasn't expecting this to be a, uh, a night race, but we, we set up the, uh, the session to be uh, sunsets and so it is uh, pretty much completely dark. Personally, maybe it's due to my gamma settings on the com on, on my uh, on my monitor or my TV. It's um, I, I hate the nights. I I I am absolutely dreadful. I'm missing my apexes even more than I usually am. Uh, but uh, <laughs> I I would not want to be Louise uh, Paolo Gallon uh, out here um, because uh, well he's got to carve his way through. And if he hasn't done any practice in the night, then this might be a little bit tricky for him. Yeah, I believe um, the fact that it's a night race, that someone's got a lot of damage under the pace car. Oh, lots of drivers. I, I think the, pit, the I think the pit lane's only just opened. So ah. uh, now everyone who has damage can come in and the, pit, the safety car lights are off, so we will go uh, green flag racing. But of course, this is kind of um, a North American uh, caution rules on the oval where the pit lane is closed for a bit and now it's open and so yeah all that damage will be fixed now. Yeah and they'll uh, just take a short stop there. I Some mean, drivers uh, are already going around the circuit but they look like they're going into 2x2 two two fashion now. Yeah you can't 
see a single file restart, but yeah, we might be uh, lining up for a double file restart um, off this one. It seems like a few drivers are kind of positioning themselves at the moment. 50% uh, fuel limit. I'm just wondering, Dane, could you go to the end of the race on a tank of fuel from here? I mean, I, I don't actually know how much longer we've got to go, but um, usually a tank, I mean, I was doing a race over one, I did, I did exceptionally well. Um, but yeah, when I was doing that race earlier on, uh, the, the fuel could go over an hour. So with just over half an hour to go, could you fuel save and get to the end of the race from here? That's a good question. I'm not sure. But uh, I think the reason why we're looking at uh, Kai is that... Is, is Kai the only Ford driver in the field? I think that might be why we're looking at the number 22 machine right now. Uh, a couple of drivers actually still have damage in this uh, pack. They decided not to take the take the repair, which is interesting. Yeah, maybe they're thinking that they can get to the end of the race, and maybe maybe they can't get to the end of the race now, but maybe they can do in like three laps, and so they'll just survive with the damage that they've got for a few laps. Come in, get the fast repair fuel up to the end and uh, be back on their way but that's uh, pretty risky especially seeing that the drivers probably don't even know how the car will feel once they get back underway racing of course uh, since that incident we immediately have the safety car so i uh, expect to see plenty of shuffling with uh, yeah these uh, very much stricken cars dropping down the order earlier on um yeah should be uh, should be an interesting start and hopefully it's a bit more successful than what we had earlier on it does seem like it's going to be a single file restart as well um so uh that should that should help things you would think so, wouldn't you? We uh, hope that the, the start will be a little bit uh, less chaotic and we can finally get some uh, get some good racing. Hopefully we don't have another incident at, um, up through the S's. That's normally the choke spot. Once you get through the S's cleanly, it normally works out okay. But let's see then. Pace car is uh, about to pull away. And we are once again green. With 31 minutes remaining, we're going to start lap number four. Ganon needs to field away. Good start. They're already going side by side further back, though. The battle for fourth. But uh, looks like Jackson just not uh, not sending it up the inside. Instead, waiting just a bit. But uh, Kim, just behind. Right on his tail now. Yeah, and the, the draft effect around this circuit is, is really quite strong. So uh, even if you uh, can just uh, can stay stay in touch, the overtakes can come to you very possibly. But uh, Kim not cl quite close enough for a move. Uh, that time, Ray's still got plenty more time to do it. Quite a bit of a, a split already. Uh, there was two seconds between first and second place across the line to start uh, off this uh, start Ooh. off the uh, restart. Looks like uh, there's been something happened in the... Uh, oh, someone's on the grass. Something happened yeah, in, the, in the chicane there. Okay, Nassi was in 19th place. In fact, he was uh, a driver who got involved in something earlier on. And yeah, Nassi's gone off at the chicane. Caused a little bit of a Constantina behind. And uh, yeah, fortunate that more, not more drivers were involved in uh, yeah that incident down at the uh, at the chicane. Yeah, looks like we, uh, we're staying green, of course. So it uh, doesn't look like it's too much of uh, a major incident there but um, it looks like uh, Jackson dropping back just slightly from uh, Manhorn now the gap between them actually no, it's, it's uh, only about three tenths of a second there there's Jackson behind so uh, once we get uh, the full speed down uh, through up through the S's and onto the back straight might see some uh, overtakes trying to be made on this uh, second lap since we restart. Yeah, yeah, those uh, overtakes surely only a matter of time still. They start to uh, to kick in uh, a, a little bit more. And um, yeah, and, uh, with, the, with the, the pit stops as well coming up pretty soon, it can be important to get that track position if you, uh, if you possibly can. It uh, doesn't look like anyone's uh, quite close enough into the chicane to make a move. That's uh, one of the best overtaking opportunities on the circuit if you can get a good enough run out of turn one. 
and carry that speed all the way up through the S as it looks like Sanchez is doing just that, going to the outside. And they're side by side in front, there's a big wreck in front. Oh dear, are they going to be able to avoid it just about? Getting on the brakes, but is everyone else able to avoid it? Looks like the person in front hasn't avoided it. There's another... Oh, there's a bit of carnage going on here. I think everyone else has managed to avoid it, though, it looks like. Yeah, that is uh, that is good news. We don't need uh, yeah more incidents. But uh, yeah, if uh, if a few drivers who have already taken their fast repair have uh, got involved in that one, then uh, that could be be uh, really quite disastrous for them. Perhaps could be their race over. So uh, yeah, more more uh, more incidents here at Hawkins Glen. Let's uh, let's see what happened. It all happened in front of Sanchez, uh, who we were riding on board with. So let's see, going uh, three wide and the 37 just creeping across. And uh, yeah, unfortunately just uh, gets uh, hooked around by the driver on their outside. Uh, definitely seems like the 37 cut across just a little bit though. And uh, that caused the first incident, but I think something else happened behind. And in front, I think someone trying to avoid that got on the grass and then got on the brakes on the grass and ended up losing it. And slamming into the wall but it is all cleared up now as uh, the leaders make their way through for the sixth time oh yeah there, there was a couple more incidents behind oh, that. No. that looks like the exact same thing as we saw just a few moments ago Jackson on uh, on the uh, left hand side of the track on the right hand side of the screen and uh, trying to go around the outside and uh, Manhole just uh, cut across. Yeah, it did seem like he just didn't leave enough room for his rival. And uh, well, how much damage does he have? I think he's got away with that one pretty fortunately. I wouldn't be surprised if he's... Uh, well, I, I wouldn't have been surprised if he completely bashed in that uh, rear corner, but... As far as I can see the car now, it's, it seems to have got back underway and he hasn't even got too much aero damage, so very lucky there was Manahol. Yeah, and uh, I think he actually got very lucky, didn't touch the wall um, too hard anyway, uh, just turned around and uh, managed to keep it going in a straight line, backwards albeit, and on the grass, but uh, not uh, any heavy contact with the wall at all, so uh, getting a little bit lucky with that one, but uh, of course losing quite a bit of time. And uh, what's happened to Song? There is Song. Oh dear. Oh. That was uh, a little bit hairy there, but uh, dropping down to 18th. So uh, has there been contact or was that uh, an unforced error from from Song there? So let's see. Very tricky car, there's a tricky corner in these cars, so it's easy to go around. Has he dipped a wheel onto the grass? No, nah, it's just, yeah, oh, losing no, just, the rear just, ends. Yeah. Looped it on turning. Uh, didn't touch the grass at the entry. Uh, that's normally the the number one reason people spin at that corner. But uh, yeah, just uh, turned itself around. Didn't touch the curb either. It doesn't look like so. Yeah, very weird one there. Just uh, the car swapping ends because it feels like it really. Yeah, people do sometimes say that's a little bit of a weakness of uh, of the McLaren. Um, so maybe that's uh, coming to fruition right there. Still, uh, still Galon leading by about uh, 1.7 seconds across the line on that last lap, looking pretty strong for him whilst it all goes on behind. Can't help but feel if you do pit now though, you surely you can get to the end of the race. I'm surprised we haven't seen more drivers uh, opt in so far. Um, I'll bet quite a few have, of course, taking their faster pairs early on in the race. Uh, Lamb just driving now behind the uh, Ferrari in front. And uh, I think that might be a lapped car that they're trying to get past there. Uh, the Audi just behind. Yep, 35th position. What's that Audi? That was uh, Zubir, the uh, the Malaysian driver. And uh, yeah, they're starting to come up to some traffic now, potentially from uh, that incident we saw just a few moments ago. But uh, flashing the headlights was uh, Young in the uh, in 11th place. Ooh. Oh, 
they uh, they close between the draws just ahead of uh, Young at the moment. Uh, Kanata in the Ford. Uh, Boyd is in the ah, I can see it in this uh, time of day. Uh, no, in the Mercedes, in fact, it was uh, uh, Nassi just ahead in the McLaren as uh, uh, Hongsweet is looking to go to the outside at the bus stop. Just uh, a little bit short of making the move on uh, on Manahol there. Manahol up into, uh, yeah, we're recovering quite a few places after that uh, instant earlier on. Now we have uh, a little bit of a battle going on here. Ferrari versus Lamborghini. That is uh, Lamb just uh, just ahead of uh, Tixera there. Oh, a little bit loose was Lamb. This might be an opportunity to send one down the inside. Are we going to see it now as they enter the boot? And that is a pretty good move. Actually sends it a bit too deep. Lamb having to lift off a bit to avoid slamming into the back of the uh, Ferrari in front. And uh, isn't going to make a move into, uh, I think this is heel. Yeah, so uh, that one's done. I'm just, uh, Lamb's position, that's very annoying for Lamb. Uh, I don't know uh, if, if it's just me, but I can't see his position up in the top left of his yeah. uh, windshield. I, I did not realise that was a Lamb big thing. Apparently ah. the BMW and the Lambo don't have the position numbers uh, shown, so apologies if uh, that's a little bit. It, it does look like it's uh, almost stalking the other drivers, so it's that much darker though. And uh, can creep up on uh, on the others. The Lambo does struggle a little bit down the street, so this will be tricky uh, to make this move probably for uh, for Lamb. But uh, it's looking for a way through anyway. This bus stop makes the overtake at the end of the street much more tricky. He's gesturing to the inside, but by no means is the inside the easy route. And uh, yeah, he just does just have to back out of it. Just couldn't get that uh, momentum advantage. Now the Lambo surely might have an advantage in these conditions because you can see the uh, beams of light that comes out of the front of it with the endurance light package. And uh, yeah, can see that much more of the circuit. But uh, yeah, at the moment it's not getting him 12th place. And he's got to watch out behind as well because uh, Toei just behind. Also in the Ferrari, and right on the back of these two as well. So not only does the Lamb have to worry about trying to get past the driver in front, also got to worry about not getting past by the driver behind, which uh, could potentially be a little bit more important. Looking to the inside now, trying to both look up the inside and try and cover off Toby behind, but uh, Texera all up over the curb there on the inside. That's not really what you want. The curb's here fairly big and... Uh, Toei just getting a little bit deep under brakes and uh, drops back slightly there. And the uh, fastest lap of the race for Gallon up in front. Yeah, he's uh, he's pulling away from, uh, of course, a very competitive driver in Ross Russo, uh, AMF double champion. Um, Luis is, uh, I've raced against him in the, uh, in the C7 in the past. He certainly had the edge on me. Um, and uh, yeah, very talented driver is uh, is Lewis. Good to see him uh, out here. But uh, yeah, those uh, top drivers really are setting themselves as the guys to beat this season uh, so far in this uh, Watkins Glen round. And on board the Mercedes of uh, Kanata, just looking up ahead, two tenths is the gap. And uh, is it going to be close enough to make a move? Nope. And 10th uh, position will have to be good enough for Kanata this time by. Oh, I heard contact as we swapped cameras there. But it looks like uh, Toei trying to go past Lamb. Lamb now with the inside line as they head into the boot section. But uh, Toei might be able to hold more speed around the outside. We'll have to wait and see. They're still side by side. Lamb has the advantage, but only just... But Lamb will be on the outside and has to let that one go. Oh, and they're side by side just in front as well because uh, Young has uh, made a mistake there. And Ethereum is now on the inside. Oh, deep breaking into, uh, into the heel. Can he get it done? He just Ooh. about can. Almost getting shoved out there was Tixera. He's Almost making it three wide into the next corner. Has to leave room on the inside and the outside, seemingly. 
and this is a, a great opportunity now for uh, the driver ahead to really start blowing away the podges to Xera at the front of this and then yeah Young just uh, being held up for a second and it's now uh, Chukan as well who uh, manages to pull ahead of, uh, of Lam after all of that so he does gain a position compared to where they were at the start of the lap but here comes the Lamborghini once again up the inside and uh, it's a little bit faster, quite a bit of damage as well uh, after the uh, scrum, uh, after the uh, sc uh, scraping uh, that we had on the uh, on the first couple of laps. But, uh, after all of that, was a uh, Chukan who stayed ahead. They're side by side up in front as well for a second. Young just got past Tixera into the chicane. But Lamb not gaining a lot of time through the chicane. That's obviously not a strong point. Ooh. And uh, getting all sorts of sideways into the chicane there, actually. And uh, up on the grass as well. Lost quite a lot of time from that. There's now a second behind these three. Of uh, Young Tixera and Toei. And uh, Toei looking to the inside. Now with the outside of uh, Toe. But outside that turn, not really an area where you can make a move. Looking again around the outside, but uh, yeah, nothing really that you can do from around the outside and inside the boot. Yeah, some pretty long radius corners around this part of the circuit, so yeah, you've got to go. Uh, much further away round and uh, yeah, you've got, just got to wait for the opportunity down the back straight. Yeah, back straight definitely uh, the best overtaking opportunity into the chicane as you uh, see uh, Gandon out in uh, 19th. Also in the, the Mercedes. The Mercedes was a very dead car last season uh, but it looks like iRacing might have fixed it up a bit and uh, very popular at Watkins Glen. Um, this uh, this week in uh, in the official series as well, and uh, we've got a move being made, seeing up the inside of Brook, Mercedes versus Ferrari, and on this occasion, Mercedes wins. I see uh, a decent amount of bounce performance at the moment between these cars. Um, I remember a couple of, uh, well, I, I think iRacing have generally over the years got slightly better. Uh, the bounce performance certainly still leaves a little bit to be desired, but uh, we can see uh, plenty of different GT3s all at the top of the standings uh, at the moment in this race. So uh, yeah, I've seen done a decent job. And of course the Lambo uh, having it its own characteristics. Uh, being new onto uh, onto the sim recently, and the BMW as well, it's fitted in pretty well. So uh, yeah, hopefully we uh, see kind of that flip flop as the season goes on. And uh, side by side, almost touching. Looks like uh, Toy just going around the outside of, of Young there, and actually making it work. And uh, Toy in 11th at uh, at the moment has uh, gained the position there, but. Um, Marco Barbonero telling us that he managed the top six with the Ford as the Ford goes around. Oh dear. Oh, and that's the Lamborghini just about getting around. What's that? Does that count as a commentator's curse? I'm pretty sure it was already spinning by the time I started talking about the Ford. But uh, Marco Barbonero telling us that with the Ford he managed top six in the bottom split the other day. Ford OP. No way Mark it could do that normally. <laughs> oh, that was very fortunate. That was good avoidance actually from Stephen Thomas, who you uh, managed to get round uh, round the spinning board right there into the tight. So um, yeah, nice work from those guys. Carrying I a lot of speed through the chicane there. I didn't realise you could still can you still drive the Ford then? In the official series, I thought it got dropped, but I could see seemingly not. What what was the McLaren dropped instead? Or are they still around? The BMW was dropped. Oh, I guess, yeah, I guess the old BMW was dropped. Yeah, good point. Yeah, the Z4. Rest in peace. Uh, brilliant car that was. Loved the BMW Z4. 
I don't like the BMW M4. Which is a shame, I can't drive a BMW now. I, uh, I'm, I'm driving the, the Mercedes now, this season. Marco Bobba now telling me to drive the Ford. I don't have the Ford, so I can't. I don't plan on buying the Ford either. I think I managed to never buy the Z4. Um, How? I, Did you I just not drop the GT3? I've never, I've, I've never bought the M8 either. I, it was nothing against BMW, I quite like BMW, <laughs> but I, I just tried to... Uh, Try to try not to try, try to buy one car in each class. Um, so yeah, ne ne never experienced it, so I didn't miss it too much. It was quite cool though. It was quite a cool car. So small, um, it, it was quite distinguishable also. Yeah, it was quite a small one, and uh, that made it popular for various reasons, uh, especially at Bathurst. Um, the Z4 seemed to just excel at Bathurst because I, I I feel like there was some kind of advantage there, but. The car was so small that it was easier to not hit the walls, at least for me. But uh, unfortunately, we have it's been replaced by the, the fairly massive BMW M4 in comparison, and uh, yeah, that advantage is no longer there. Yes, bring back, bring back the Z4. We will start to chance. I'm surprised Marco hasn't done it already, but if we could ride on board with Jackson and go to the rear view of uh, which is not Jackson, uh, Kevin. Uh, Juan in uh, in third place and use the rear view then we will be set alight especially in uh, in fact he may have done this I, I'm not following the camera so he may have already done this but um, I do like the flames on the back of the uh, of the McLaren so I see it out there uh, for once ah so uh, I think what you want is to go on board with Jackson and look in front no no it's the rear view of Juan I've got a camera where, it, it, uh, and I am saying uh, that Marco has already done it to be fair, so uh, credit to him for, uh, for <laughs> that one. That is the content we want to see. <laughs> Marco Barbonero keeping us entertained, yeah, you can see it there. I do like the flames in the back of the McLaren. Oh, that's very deep, that's very, very deep indeed. Song's going to get past Young here in a, a beautiful, uh, beautiful golf wheel livery. A very opportunistic move that was. Oh! Oh, oh dear. Touching the grass on the way in. That's going to send the car around no matter what car you're driving. Lamb. How's Lamb managed to uh, get past both of these guys? No, it's still uh, Huang who managed to stay ahead. Actually, Lamb, I think, having to lift out up the hill. So he nearly gained two places in one there. It took Sarah trying to come back just behind it's kicking off just behind that as well and a couple of drivers come into the pits I think as well we are running out of time uh, in this race got about 10 minutes more to go I believe um, I've got uh, Eva at the moment batting with uh, Gandor Gandor way off the circuit though through the carousel and has to uh, concede on, uh, on that position Type battle for 17th and 18th at the moment. Uh, credit to uh, a couple of these drivers getting a lot of a uh, lot of places so far. As uh, that was just Eva lets him go. In fact, he is a lap down. In fact, it's Eva. So of a battle between drivers on different laps. Just seen a replay of uh, Brad Clink, and uh, he just uh, I think it was a toe corner. Just uh, looped it around. And I don't think uh, Marco Barbonero would usually show something like that, but uh, Brad Clink, one of the commentators here at Apex Racing TV, which means if he goes on Apex Racing TV and makes a mistake, you bet your Marco will show it. Well, that's, Ooh, that's absolutely. Um, I mean, um, I'm not sure if we've seen many of your mistakes this season. I know that all too well. Oh dear, oh dear, that's a backwards Mercedes. Um, that, I wasn't expecting to see that when we swapped cameras, the Mercedes just coming onto the screen backwards, but, um, yeah, the, the number six, oh, and into the, oh, that, oh dear. Lee, not, uh, not doing the, the three-point turn. That's what you need to do there, the three-point turn. So let's see what happened. Oh dear. Slowing down a lot for that corner. And uh, gets turned around. 
Yeah. And then, um, wasn't the best rejoin in the world. And then straight into the pits. Lots of jars coming into the pits, by the way, on that last set. Because that seems to be the uh, the time to pit in. So, um, I think we've only got about the top maybe 15 who haven't pitted so far. Might even be less than that uh, who are, are yet to come into the pits. This looks like uh, Huang and Jackson going at it. And uh, Huang retaking third position there in the, in the McLaren. And uh, back to life, pitch just there, 32 minutes gone, 8 minutes to go, and you would expect the leaders to be uh, making their way down to the pits fairly soon. Uh, the top 9 haven't pitted, but pretty much everyone else has, you can see there. A couple of drivers spread out, uh, Aaron Mitz and uh, Song haven't pitted, but uh, other than that, everyone outside the top 9 has pitted. So uh, you would expect to see, uh, as uh, oh, there goes uh, Hong Sawet in uh, previously 9th place. Popping down into the pit lane. So it looks like uh, the rest of the field is going to make their way into the pits on the next time by, you would imagine. Yeah, I think so. Uh, I was just watching uh, Huang managing to keep past uh, Jackson. Apologies, everyone was watching that. Uh, down, into, uh, down into the chicane. And actually, Jackson just dropping off a little bit now through the cast, so I'll say. Uh, might be an opportunity here for Huang to pull away. I think uh, Kevin's been behind Jackson more than the other way around so if he saves some fuel then he could have a slightly shorter pit stop when it comes to the end of the race so uh yeah it could be a, a little bit of a difference there um yes and uh yeah jackson uh yeah still holding on to uh that uh to the rear end of course uh, that draft might still be able to bring back in play the question is do they come into the pits galon is just approaching the pits at the moment so still within kind of touching distance. Galon needs to make sure that he doesn't overfuel too much. Otherwise he could be in trouble. But he does continue for another lap. He's pushing this as long as possible. Yep. And uh, Huang has uh, got past uh, Jackson, of course. And uh, Jackson pulls into the pits. So uh, just feel like he has to well. do something to yeah, you'd imagine, probably has uh, one lap to go, that's why I uh, probably thought, I'll do whatever he doesn't. I just need to hope that he doesn't come out into uh, too much traffic then, after uh, after this one. Already back underway, probably uses fast repair as well, um, just to uh, fix any tiny damage he may have picked up on the curbs. And Jackson back out in clean air. He needs the lap of his life here in order to jump Huang and get that third place. Yep, definitely needs a qualifying lap, really. To uh, try and jump Huang in the pit stops. Maybe he might have uh, underfueled slightly as well. Just to try and gain as much of an advantage as possible. We are looking at the leader, who you would expect will be coming down into the pit lane very very shortly only four uh, five minutes to go so uh you know any what is it the lap times that they've been doing 145 so that's only uh, three laps or so four laps actually i think but uh by the time he comes out of the pier, so it will only be three laps oh dear oh dear lots of smoke someone's off backwards two people off okay. in the runoff area and uh and yeah, the leader does pits. Clegg just trying to rejoin the uh, circuit at the moment and does so pretty well. Not perfectly, but good enough. Doesn't get involved himself in another another instant. Rizzo and Huang also into the pit. So, I mean, Gallon and Rizzo should be pretty comfortable in first and second. Uh, I think the big one is if uh, Huang stays ahead of Jackson, he's just rounding the final corner at the moment already Galon away yeah pl very comfortable for him Rizzo away and Huang will be pulling away from his stop is he staying in third place oh I don't know it's gonna be close the thing is is that uh, Jackson he's just behind but he'll have a much better run up through the S's this could be Jackson's best opportunity to make a move the gap between them four tenths of a second but Jackson does have a much better run you can see just how much he's closing up now 
Is he going to be close enough? Ooh, let Bong lets Jackson blast. That's that interesting. Was, uh, he seemed very slow. Um, yeah, he slowed up. He slowed up and let him blast. Yeah, he, he seemed slow at the start of the hill as well. So, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe, well, yeah, he just seems slow full stop now, doesn't he? He's just falling away. Maybe he's underfield that thing. And he suddenly realised that maybe they got one extra lap. Bad news for Kevin Huang. It was looking like it was going to be a nice battle between those two, but he's uh, almost out of the draft to Angel already. Oh, here's the two drivers still battling it out with uh, just over two minutes to go. Big send down the inside for Toy. Still side by side, Halabi holding it around the outside. And has still held it, has kept it. Big lunge into the inside. No, not this time. Oh. Loops it around. Oh, and actually catches it pretty well there, but probably going to lose another place to uh, Lamb, was it? No, actually, no, that was just some lap drivers. They have quite a bit of a gap, actually, up there. Yeah, that was uh, a slightly odd one. Two laps to go in the race. Oh, Huang going back into the pit. What has happened there? Did he maybe speed on pit exit? I will go back myself and uh, and see what could be the uh, explanation for this. It does look like a... No, it's not a penalty. No, that's... That is very weird. That stop was uh, 16 seconds. That's very odd because everyone else's pit late, uh, pit time was about 6-7 seconds. For their, for their fuel stop. So it wasn't a fuel stop. So what was it? Mm, I, know, I think it may have been speeding because he was up to... 96 kilometers by the time he got out of the pits. The speed limit, uh, I think it says somewhere, is uh, oh, it's 97. Apologies, no, it's 72. Yeah, I think he pit, he's fed under pit lane. So I think that may have been a, a hold for that. I'm sure the, the stop and hold for speeding the pits is a lot higher than 16 seconds. I would have thought that as well, to be fair. Yep. Very odd. Very, very odd. Um, white flag. Lap 21 will be the last one. And uh, you know, the Brazilian up in front is uh, showing no signs of uh, letting up. He is, uh, he's been uh, pretty dominant up there in front in the Mercedes. Yeah, Rizzo has dropped the gap a little bit, but Gallon's probably just cruising. At this point, no pressure. Great to see Ross Rizzo out there. It's good to see Ross Rizzo not at the stop, stop, stuff of the podium. He's won um, pretty much 70% of the races in Aussie Mixed and Fixed GT Series in the last couple of seasons. Um, but, of course, you can count on him still getting the uh, most out of the car and finishing second best if he's not the absolute fastest. And uh, Well, hopefully we see Gallon and uh, Rizzo throughout the season because uh, it could be an awesome championship battle between the two. Yeah, definitely, definitely looking forward to this. It should be a good season from uh, from what we've seen. Some good racing already today, and uh, still some drivers very close together on this final lap. Just heading down into the boot now for uh, Tixia Manhua. But uh, Gallon, where is he on the circuit? Uh, Coming towards the final few corners now, just two corners to go. One corner takes it uh, very cleanly off the grass. Oh, actually touches the grass on the entrance. But across the line comes Louise Gallon, and he will win round number one of the next level racing sim races Asia GT3 series. Ross Rizzo finishes in uh, second, and uh, Timothy Jackson, well, he'll finish in third. But I think he uh, might have wanted a battle with Kevin Huang. 
for that third position at the end there. Oh dear, Ryan Lamb going very slowly. Has Lamb run out of fuel? It looks like it. The car is, uh... oh yes, coasting. Oh dear. Oh, he'll do well to get to the end of him here. He's got a long way to go. Can't someone give him another push? Um, <laughs> we need, uh, yeah. Well, he's, he's dropping a lot of places. He was up in 12th place there, was Lamb. Um, he's already down into 17th, and uh, I, he's not going to reach the line with, uh, with this one, unfortunately. So uh, that will put him down to 23rd place. It's not the absolute end of the world. A um, few drivers missing out on uh, on the lead lap, so oh, not awful news there for Lamb, but uh, oh, that is painful to see all these drivers go past you. Uh, I'm surprised he was uh, caught out there. Maybe thought that it was going to be one lot shorter lap than uh, than the others did. Maybe, but I, th I think it might be downhill from here if he can just coast. You can see he's, uh, the downhill definitely helping him. There's only This is the final corner he's trying to go around at the moment, but then I think it might go uphill. Oh, that's so unfortunate. Maybe trying to make it into the pit lane? Yeah, don't go down the pits, mate. No one can help you out. Come on, someone give him a push. Where is the... Where oh, is I the think actually Bugatti? a lot of drivers have run out of fuel. Those dri those cars weren't making... Oh, d oh! Oh, he's getting a push now, I think. Oh, that is a P31 coming to them. Was that Nassi? Or was oh, no. someone's run out of fuel in the background as well. I think a couple of drivers have run out of fuel on, on this last lap. Oh dear, Jafar. Yeah, I think uh, Hoy as well. Oh, it's so close. I think, I think he's got enough speed. I think it's going to be close though. Oh dear. Yeah, I think he's, I, I think he's got it. Crawling up to the line. Yep, he's gonna cross it. Just seconds to go. Oh, oh, it's a finish. I mean, it made no difference. <laughs> I mean, he, uh, he 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 was going to be uh, he was a lap ahead of the rest anyway. But um, some satisfaction, I think, in that one. And uh, race results then. Luis Garon. Well, it was a it was a green to checkered victory there. Pole position and led every single lap. And uh, he takes the win here in round number one of the of the GT3 series. Uh, Ross Rizzo finishing four seconds behind in second. Then uh, Timothy Jackson, uh, Ty Kim, Cameron Stubber, and uh, Sebastian Tixier, uh, Yashish Manhoa. Then uh, Hong Sowet, Tori Huang, uh, Kanata Singh Jali. Then uh, Young Tixera, Song Halabi, and Thomas Ferry. Uh, Ferry finishing in uh, 18th there. Quite a few drivers ended up uh, getting lapped, as you can see now. Uh, 19th, Gandor. Then Aaron Mitt, Hoy, um, Lam. Of course, uh, getting pushed over the line by Long. Uh, then uh, Glenn Paolo, Benjamin Brook. These drivers all are lapped down. Stefan Yvert, Stephen Thomas, and uh, Sharul Jafar just about making it over the line at the end there. Then uh, Ryan Kai uh, Brunsanong, then Huang Nasi K Li Tang, and then uh, Brad Klink in 36th, Junos in 37th, and uh, Rinaldi Ido in uh, 38th. These drivers all getting involved in some incidents fairly early on in the race, and they're quite a few laps down now. Zubir, Zhang, Simon Sanchez, um, Fanat uh, Bennett, and Andy So. Uh, Andy, so I don't think finished the first lap of the race, unfortunately. Yeah, uh, quite a high efficient don't. race tonight. Uh, but uh, yeah, a low interview rate. Um, we had a remarkable number in the Radical Racing Championship last night. Maybe we were spoilt on that one. Uh, because we are deserted a little bit at the moment, but of course uh, a quick shout out to some of the guys who make this uh, series possible uh, First up a shout out to Next Level Racing 
uh, because they are providing an FGT rig to the overall series champion. So that's quite a big prize on offer for whoever wins that. And that is uh, Next Level Racing. Do uh, check them out. Uh, check their website out. Some uh, fantastic uh, sim racing uh, hardware that you can get for yourself. Uh, over there and also they will be providing a GT light rig as well to a random participant so all the drivers will be up uh, for a chance of uh, taking home that one uh, also thanks to Sim Racing Association SG for the sa uh, sanctioning of this series and also Motorsports uh, Singapore for supporting Sim Racers Asia, and in fact, I think we do now finally have uh, a uh, an interview waiting for us. So, uh, uh, Dane, would you like to have a chat with uh, Tim Jackson? Yeah, let, let's get him in. He's the only person uh, that decided to join us for an interview. Uh, Tim, welcome to the commentary booth, and uh, third place for you today. But uh, you, had, you had to work for it quite a bit throughout the race, but uh, sort of gifted to you at the end. Yep, I would say that would be correct. I just, uh, from what I'm, what I can see is um, must have been a speeding penalty, I assume, in pits. Yeah, yeah so he had to go back into the pits and uh, stopped for about 16 seconds. I thought the stop and go for speeding was a, a bit longer than that, but uh, it does seem uh, Sam Fitzpatrick did a bit of uh, detective work, and it does seem he did speed coming out of the pit lane, just uh, eager to get out in front of you. But uh, you had a good battle with him throughout the race, um, and uh, you found yourself avoiding incidents very early on in the race, as we're seeing on the replay now. I think, yeah, I think the first lap, first three corners were crazy. Um, a few people wanted to get into the first corner in the lead, and um, unfortunately, you know, you end up three and four wide, and cars spin, and, you know, you can't really avoid some of those issues. So I don't think there was any deliberate driving from anybody, but um, it is, it's racing. Yeah, it's uh, also sort of uh, the nature of what can then start. So you ended up, uh, it looks like you ended up three wide coming up through the top of the S's there at the start of the race. Then it all kicked off behind you and the safety car came out quite unexpected, I would imagine, for the safety car, car on its side behind you. Um, but yeah, the safety car did end up coming out. And uh, did that play into the strategy of things at all? Were you trying to save as much fuel as possible throughout, throughout the safety car period? Yeah, absolutely. I, th I think I was in... Um... On the on the on the um, clutch quite a long time of the uh, the uh, safety car period. I think it saved a couple of leaders, and I think that's a bit of difference in the time in the pits there. Yeah, definitely. Uh, your pit stop was uh, actually quite sh quite a bit shorter than uh, a lot of the other drivers up uh, up at the front of the uh, of the uh, the pack there. But in the safety car, then the restart, tires cold, brakes cold as well. Uh, was it was it sketchy out there when you when you got to the restart? Yeah, it was. I think you got to look at it no different to the start of the race. I think everyone's jostling for positions. Everyone's close and using that draft up into the couple of, up into the chicanes and the hairpin there. And I think they're the most important few corners to get through. Um, once you pass there, it's not too bad. Yeah, definitely. The track uh, opens up a little bit with uh, in terms of uh, space on uh, the outside of the track after the first couple of corners and uh, yeah, you kept yourself uh, out of trouble for the most part and uh, managed to bring home third place for the first round of the season. Uh, I think it's a 10 round season, I believe, for uh, this uh, GT3 series, so still a long way to go, but uh, putting yourself in, in a good position on the first round. Yeah, um, absolutely, and I guess at the end of the day, it's consistency is going to win it. Um, I don't, you know, not everyone ends up um, participating in every race for, for personal reasons so the more points you can get and the consistent you can be while you're here the better opportunities you've got uh, towards the end of the season absolutely well uh timothy uh, congratulations on the uh, third place finish thanks for joining us in in the interview room and uh, before we let you go is there anyone you'd like to give a shout out to oh look just the organizers events you guys that commentate it um every second week like you know without those sorts of things you don't get this sort of um exposure so Thanks to, to the organisers and thanks to you guys for the, uh, for the for putting the race on. And uh, thanks to you for giving us something to talk about while, we, uh, while we're commentating with uh, some good racing out there. And uh, yeah, Tim, congrats on the third place and uh, we'll see you in two weeks' time. Thanks, Dane, Mark, I Sam. Thanks. Well, it, was, uh, it was good to hear from uh, Tim Jackson there. And uh, Sam, do we have time for well, one more? Because the, the drivers have just appeared now.
<laughs> yeah, we're being a bit spoilt. Um, I would like to have a chat with Mr. Ross Rizzo, um, because he thought he'd escaped me. I thought I'd escaped him, but uh, not to be, because he has once again succeeded out there, a second position. Um, well, it's, it's not the first place, like he got, re got used to an AMF, Ross, but it's still a very good start to the season. Yeah, thanks, Sam. Very pleased with that. I mean, I wasn't expecting to be anywhere near the league of um, uh, Louis today because you know he's he's a beast in that in that Mercedes. So I had no hope of um, catching him under any circumstance. But I was just trying to get some mileage in the in the new BMW, and um, got to say that was a, a huge success. Absolutely. How was the night? Had you been practicing during uh, the, this this type of conditions during the week? Not at all. I only jumped into um, uh, to an official server about half an hour before the race, and that was all in clear daylight. So um, yeah, the night I've not, not driven here at night, um, and yeah, I was. It was uh, interesting because it gets really dark around where the sweeper is at the end of the back straight, and you know it'd be nice to spot the, the corner. Sorry, the corner exit, which is very important. But um, some of those are kind of um, blinded by uh, uh, being unable to see, which was a, a pretty fun challenge. But um, yeah, rose to it and it was, um, you know, luckily I didn't have too much pressure to really worry about it too much. It was kind of a lonely race and the car was uh, pretty hooked up. So, so yeah, basically the night presented the the main challenge. Now, I, I remember um, it would have been, it's coming up to four years ago now, actually, that I did my first uh, broadcast. And I recall you were winning in the, in the Radical in this championship uh, back when it was uh, multi-class. Um, why you, you've been around this series for a while, what, why, what, what is it about Sim Racers Asia which uh, convinces you to come back season after season? <laughs> well, those precious memories of um, of the of the radical. <laughs> to be honest, um, you know, I remember a lot of the a lot of the names. It's always been very respectful racing. Um, but yeah, it's 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 a huge league, and I'm just looking at you know the uh, the leaderboard now on one of the on the uh, broadcast of going back a couple of laps, and just the diversity of some of the national flags is just incredible. And I think that's really the testament of the kind of um, uh, the appeal that this uh, league has, not only to mainly to Asia, but also I'm seeing a couple of um, you know American flags in there as well. So yeah, it's it's a testament to to the appeal of such a large, um, widespread championship. Is there anyone you'd uh, like to give a shout out to, Russ? Of course, I'd like to thank first of all Sim Races Asia for uh, putting on the series, and you know the. Um, I congratulate them on their continued success uh, being such a long-standing league and to my guys at Tr uh, Trick Esports, Trick Custom Fabrications and Pro Sim Gear. Awesome, well uh, thanks for having a chat with us Ross and uh, best of luck for the next round of the championship. Alright, thanks very much guys. Uh, Ross is a there, of course, two-time Aussie Mixed and Fixed GT champion and second place tonight. Yep, he, uh, he did a pretty good job up there. Uh, did, uh... Old Ross and uh, the 784 machine. Um, I believe it was in uh, the BMW. But uh, that just about wraps everything up then for the first round of the season. As you might have heard earlier, we are broadcasting every other round of the series for the most part. I think we have a, a double header uh, midway through the season. But we will uh, catch everybody in two weeks for what will be round three of the Next Level Racing Sim Racers Asia iRacing GT3 series. I've been Dane Baird, Sam Fitzpatrick, alongside with Marco Barbonera in the production booth. And I want to wish you a good night and happy racing.